Hello, I'm Steve. A little about myself. I'm a retired law enforcement officer with 20 years of service. I began my career in the jail, worked the road, and became an investigator. During my career, my training consisted of everything from SWAT to becoming a state certified crime scene technician. I've investigated crimes from thefts to homicides. After retiring and becoming aware of true crime and web sleuths, I started my channel for web sleuths to better understand the perspectives of law enforcement. Not only do we cover true crime, I go out into the field and assist families who have lost loved ones to homicide and their cases are considered cold. Join me as we look and bring attention to these critical cases. Hello, everyone. Glad you're able to join us tonight. Tonight, um, Mrs. Steve has been upstairs uh, painting with a paintbrush and uh, a roller on some of the rooms as we transition in our properties. But anyway, I wish to thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, I have, uh, will be collaborating with another creator tonight. Uh, her channel is Southern Gal True Crime, and uh, she's a growing channel, has a great uh, uh uh, perspective on uh, and working with the tr true crime and uh, I look and I watch her shows and um, I hope y'all enjoy her show and if you would throughout the show if you would um, check her channel out uh, sub to her channel and um, let's make sure that uh, she has a footprint and that she grows and through that growth that she's able to bring awareness to a lot of cases out there and um, but as always to all my um, um, people that are new to this channel we thank you for being here, but also be mindful and be respectful to uh, families, mods, and each other. We're going to be talking about a uh, case tonight, and if you're aware of the case and know the case, and just like on all cases that we deal with, if there's suspects that we are not discussing, uh, let's not use any names or any initials and uh, because we just don't want to... Um, throw people out there that may or may not be involved and it's just uh, opinions. And so with that being said, I want to thank you and let me introduce you to our guest tonight. Hello there, Dawn. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you doing? Thank you for coming tonight. Oh, it is my honor. I've oh, uh, been looking forward to, forward to this for a long time. I told you uh, earlier when we were chatting that uh, you have been a big inspiration to me. Uh, in starting my channel, uh, you're one of the good guys, as I call them, and uh, so I'm just really honored and uh, excited to be here. Hello, everybody in chat. Okay. If you would, just uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your channel there. Well, I'm Dawn, and like I said, uh, my channel is uh, Southern Gal True Crime. I concentrate mostly on uh, the lesser-known cases, uh, missing persons and soft cases that don't get the... Uh, national attention like the uh, Kohlbergers and the uh, Humans and not that those cases and victims aren't important, but we also have these lesser known ones that don't get the attention and uh, they're just as important. Um, especially missing children cases are my heart. Um, just when That's children it. go missing or, or uh, t their lives are taken, it just, just gnaws at me and eats at me. And, uh, so that is my passion, and I just try to be the uh, best ambassador and a positive voice uh, that I can um, to try to bring these stories to everybody, and uh, I hope okay. everybody uh, enjoys them. Well, uh, so far, and you know, I've watched your shows. I've uh, participated, been in chat, and uh, I yes. appreciate everything you do. And um, you. with that being, say about, uh, being said about collaboration, um, during my member show the other day, I brought up that I was um, – I uh, work cold cases also in addition to this channel and mm -hmm. through my channel, I was able that families would reach out to me to work cold cases and a recent cold case that I'm preparing some uh, um, presentations to law enforcement. Otherwise I was needing a specific chair and uh, yes. I'm going to hit that <laughs> point just a second that I want to thank everyone. Uh, I reached out to a bunch of creators today and um, the, return that i have gotten through messaging emails we have found this chair um, all right I've, found, I've have i have people that have sent me information from russia uh to malaysia uh wow. canada, 
this chair is very popular in Canada, by the way. But um, <laughs> we also, um, I've got some that um, uh, closest so far is Texas. And I'm working with a family there. Hopefully, maybe I can find one even closer. Um, and the closer to Indiana, the better. And uh, so uh, if you do see someone that uh, it has to be exact match. But here's the uh, image. It's on our community uh, page uh, also. So if you see this chair and if you're local or close anywhere in the United States, absolutely let me know. Um, and it has to be exact. There's a lot of similar chairs, but uh, I want to thank everybody that's uh, helped me on this so far. All right. Okay. Well, Don, I know you have brought a, a specific case up tonight. Well, what case are, are you uh, wanting to discuss? Uh, we, I want to talk about the Morgan Nick case. Okay. And, right. um, Go ahead. And I don't know. Do I? Can I bring the presentation up? Or you do should you be able to. All right. Let me. Uh, Will it allow you, or you want me to go through it? Mm, okay, I'll bring it up. There we go. There you we just go. Just tell me what slide you want, and I'll put. It. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. Let me get. Uh, I have to get back full screen because uh, as I get older, I find that my uh, eyes don't work so well. So I, I mean, I'll, and I'm on my phone, so everything is about this big. Um. All right, so uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and go to the uh, to the next slide there. All righty, thank you. All right. I don't feel right giving you orders. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! It's very important. This is what collaboration is about, and what the uh, the power of what YouTube can do and the creators can do. Absolutely, yeah. this this is uh, um, uh, something that is very important to all of us. Go yes. ahead. All right, so uh, Morgan Nick, as you can see, is this beautiful uh, six-year-old little girl. She lived with her uh, mother, Colleen, in uh, Ozark, Arkansas. She had a, two, uh, a younger brother and a younger sister. And um, on June 9th, she and uh, her mom attended this uh, Little League baseball game in uh, Alma, which is only about 15 to 20 minutes um, from where they lived in Ozark. Um, the younger two children went to spend the night with the grandparents because Colleen said that she didn't think she could uh, keep up with all three kids at the baseball game. So the younger two went to uh, spend the night with the grandparents. Uh, Colleen and uh, Morgan attended this ball game. It was a family friend, um, had a son that was playing in this ball game. So the, uh, family friend had a call to invite them to come watch the ball game. So they went to the ball game. And what, and what I find is ironic is that Morgan is said that Morgan was very shy. And during the course of uh, the ball game, these uh, two friends, there was one female, one male friend had to uh, come up several times and ask Morgan if uh, she wanted to go just right across the street to the parking lot. There was a, Evidently a big sand pile there that the kids like to play in. And the, the first few times uh, she, she didn't want to go. Uh, she, she said she wanted to stay with there uh, with her mom. But finally, uh, it was around 1030 uh, or so. It was getting close to the end of the game. They came back and said that they were going to go catch fireflies or lightning bugs, as we call them down south here. So apparently Morgan uh, loved uh, fireflies so that uh enticed her to go so she finally decided to go she uh turned around to her mom colleen asked if she could uh, go over there and at first uh colleen was hesitant hesitant to let her go because it was evidently it was the first time that they'd ever been to this ball field um she didn't know the area very well um but the other parents there told her you know it's very safe um you know, just a small area. The actual football or a baseball field actually had a double fence around it. There were no concession stand stands, no restrooms where uh, anybody could snatch a kid and, you know, drag them in. Um, so anyway, um, she eventually, uh, Colleen, let Morgan uh, go with these other two children out to the uh, parking lot. And I think if you go to the next slide, I have a and uh, if you see there on the left side, the very bottom where the S is for South, that's where the um, baseball field was located. And up there, you can see it says location of the abduction site. That is the um, the uh, 
parking lot where they were going to go play at. And you could, and it, they said you could see from the bleachers, you could have, you did have a good view of uh, the parking lot where they were going to go play. So it wasn't like it was, you know, hundreds of feet away or, you know, a mile or two away where you couldn't see. Um, and I believe uh, Colleen stated in the, um, because there is a documentary uh, called Still Missing Morgan. Um, she said that where they were sitting, she could look off to the left and she could see the kids playing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the kids went to play to uh, chase these fireflies. Um, around 1045, the game was ending. Uh, so the kids, the three kids decided to, uh, they were going to go back to reunite with their parents at the ball field. They had been playing in the sand. Morgan had stopped to, uh, empty the sand out of her shoes. And the, uh, female um, child that was with them went on ahead. The, uh, male child had, uh, stopped to, uh, stay with Morgan while she, uh, emptied the sand out of her shoes. And he stayed with her until she got the sand em emptied out of her shoes. She got one shoe on. She was in the process of putting her last shoe on and tying it. At that point, while she was finishing tying her shoe, the male um, friend decided to go on back. Um, so he he went back. They got back over to the uh, where the parents were. Colleen asked where uh, Morgan was. The male said, you know, she... She should be right behind me. She was finished tying her shoes. At that point, uh, Colleen said that she wouldn't really panic at that time. But after a few minutes, when Mar Morgan didn't come back, <clears throat> the game ended. They went to the parking lot. She started looking for Morgan. Morgan was nowhere to be seen. And that was the last time she was seen, unfortunately. It's amazing how uh, these uh, predators. Uh, yes. Uh, are able to go out and uh, intermingle and go to these areas. But that's what predators do. They go to where these sites are of whereas mm -hmm. they can uh, have easy access to these children. And mm -hmm. it only takes a second as this is a clear case that, you know, of the uh, friends playing with them and just turn their mm -hmm. back and she's just gone. It's absolutely yeah. Right. Yep, and I believe they said uh, in the, in the documentary and from articles that I read that it was, um, no more than five minutes. It was mm -hmm. probably three to four minutes from when the, the male friend left and he got back and she was gone, to, yeah. you know, just like that. I worked a case. And what is ironic also, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. What's ironic is you can't see it on this slide, but to the east, just a block and a half away is the Alma Police Department. Mm -hmm. So the police department was basically a block away. So whoever this offender was, was, Either if it was somebody who knew the area, they were that brazen to um, abduct a child just a block and a half away from the police department and didn't have any fear of getting caught. Mm. That's just what blows my mind. Yeah. yeah, I worked a case at a state park where an individual on a busy beach tried to abduct a child in front of hundreds of people. And mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't work out real mm -hmm. well for him. No, no. Level. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Gladly for that case, and uh, exactly. But uh, it's so, uh, but sadly, it they are successful in so many other cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Let's get to the next one here. All right. So, um, mm -hmm. tell us about the vehicle here. Yes, this is the infamous uh, red truck with the white camper shell, and uh, apparently. So this was seen at the ball game. Um, so this was back in 95. So uh, it was before a uh, cell phone recording. So they had, you know, camcorders. And uh, after she disappeared, they, um, of course, they cordoned off the area. The police got there within, I think, six minutes of, uh, I think, one of the coaches actually called 911 when they couldn't find Morgan. Police were there within six minutes. And through the course of their uh, investigation, they accounted for all the vehicles and all the people that were there. But the only person and or vehicle that could not be, be accounted for was this red truck with a white camper shell. So it became um, a key point in the investigation early on, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and. Uh, 
lost my train of thought. Sorry. In uh, the way leading up to, because this happened on a Friday night, and as the investigator, they did their investigation. Um, there were five instances in that week of a don't know if it's the same one of a red truck with a white camper shell um, trying in in and around Alma. Um, stopping and talking to children on the streets, trying to lure them into the vehicle. Um, so, I mean, I don't know how many, they said there they had leads on two or three um, different uh, models of red trucks with white camper shells, but um, you would know better than I would. What are the odds that there are more than one red truck with a white camper shell that was driving around for a week um, trying to lure children um, into a vehicle, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would, just my uh, novice uh, knowledge, uh, would think that it would be the same person. All right. And um, we have a, a what's a, a, on this slide? Yes. Okay. All right. This, um, on so Morgan was abducted on the night of June 9th. On the morning of June 9th in Alma, and they and uh, the investigators um, put all this together after Morgan was abducted, and they went back and, and looked at other uh, police reports. On the morning of June 9th, there was an another an attempted abduction of a child uh, from a laundromat. Now I don't know if it was a red truck with a white camper shell, but it was uh, the person matched the description of Morgan's offender, the person that abducted Morgan. Mm -hmm. Luckily, this uh, child uh, ran off, did not get into the vehicle. So we have that one on June, the morning of June 9th, unsuccessful. We have the successful abduction of Morgan on June, the night of June 9th. And then the next day in, on June 10th in Fort Smith, which you can see here is uh, the top of the blue Rude is Alma. The red um, pen is uh, Fort Smith, which is only 20 minutes away, 20 minutes drive time. There was another attempted abduction of a child. And this was uh, a, somebody, once again, matching the description of Morgan's attempted abdu or abductor. Tried to grab somebody, a child from a convenience store, tried to lure them into the bathroom. Um, luckily, um, the child's mother, you know, we got a mama bear here, managed to fight off this abductor and uh, he got away. So, I mean, to me, this is just scary that if it, if it is the same person, the same offender, and what are the odds that it's not? You have three different, within 24 to 48 hour period, you have three, one, you have two attempted abductions and one successful abduction. And what was driving this offender, he was, to me, he would be out of control. I mean, you would know better than me oh, about yeah. that, but that yeah. it was just very scary. These offenders, when they get triggered and whatever triggers them, it could be anything from drugs, alcohol, or, you know, mm -hmm. or their fantasies, whatever. Uh, I mean, yes. they're true predators and they yes. prey upon our weakest. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So that is just so scary that, like I said, within a three days or two days time, there was a one successful abduction and two attempts. Okay, now what led us to what happened in 2002? So I could not find at first. So on the January of 2002, um, they worked off of a, a tip, and I could not find if it was a, an anonymous tip or whatever it was, but they got supposedly got this tip about a piece of a private property in Boonville, which once again is a in the general area of uh, Alma and Ozark and uh, that area, very close together. They got this tip and they said that this tip, whatever it was, was very specific. They never explained why they said that why it was specific. So they took a, they did a dig out there. They took, I believe, a cadaver dogs. I'm not sure. Um, did a dig and, um, Apparently they didn't find anything in the 
they at 9 30 p.m that night they called it off now when i first read this i thought that it could be related to um the primary suspect uh, billy jack links but this was in uh 2000 or 2002 and billy jack links that he was officially named formally named a suspect in 2021 but they had only been investigating him since 2018. So I don't know. And there were other persons of interest that they did investigate that were not a, well, one was publicly named, but I'm not going to give the name because he was never charged with anything. So that that's really all the information I have about that. Apparently they didn't find anything. Um, so, and I don't know, like I said, I don't know where this, uh, tip came from him and then in uh, 2010 and 2017 they got a tip about um this property in spiro or spiro oklahoma um the first time was in uh, 2010 um i don't think there was a tip i don't know what led them to it actually in 2010 uh they did a, a search um didn't come up with any, with anything, but then in 2017, they said they did receive a tip. So they went back out there and they took cadaver dogs that time. And supposedly this uh, cadaver dog alerted on a whale. Um, but that search was called off, I believe the next day or the next couple of day in uh, December 19th. Now I think this property might have been connected to um, Charles, a man named Charles Ray Vines. He was a known uh, serial offender who was uh, known to be operating in the area at that time. And uh, I went back and rewatched um, just to brush up on my information, the uh, documentary. And they mentioned uh, that they had, they went out to properties owned by Charles Ray Vines twice. This uh, property was searched twice. And they mentioned that when they dug down a couple of feet and they hit bedrock, which I had read in articles about this property that was searched in Oklahoma. And then in the documentary, they said that when they searched the uh, Charles Ray Vines property, that they hit bedrock. So I just maybe put two and two together and possibly this property could have been uh, um, associated with Charles Ray Vines. But I, I'm not, I don't know for sure. I was just kind of, you know, getting the little squirrels in my head going and, <laughs> trying to make some connections all right so Tell us about billy this jack, interesting yeah. individual yes B billy jack links he was formally named as a person of interest and the prime suspect in 2021 um the reason the primary reason that he was named a suspect he uh fit the uh, physical description of Morgan's abductor. He was known to be in the area at the time. He had lived in Van Buren. Um, he knew the area well. He, he drove a red truck. And at one point, his red truck did have a camper shell, white camper shell on it. Um, and I think in the next slide, two months um, after morgan disappeared billy jack links um attempted to abduct an 11 year old child from a sonic in van buren and this was like i said two months after morgan disappeared it was only eight miles from the baseball field that morgan disappeared from um fortunately uh, he was not successful because he approached it was actually a female and two males at the sonic he uh they had uh, got their drinks and uh, fries or whatever they were getting from sonic they had walked out across the parking lot this red truck without a camper shell approached them um he focused primarily on the female he offered her money to get in the truck and go home with him now at this point the two uh male children had walked back towards the Sonic and when he uh, attempted to lure the girl, this little girl into his truck, she started screaming, running back towards the Sonic um, to, for help. The police were called. 
and uh, Billy Jacklings apparently panicked. He took off. Uh, when he took off, he actually crashed into a telephone pole. Um, a witness at the scene got his uh, license uh, license plate number. And so he was consequently, they found him, he was arrested, he was charged um, with this attempted abduction, and uh, he was sentenced to six years in prison, um, but he passed away in prison in 2000. So he was not named a person of interest or primary suspect until 21 years after he had passed away. Yeah, we're seeing that a lot of times, especially with some of the technologies that they now that are out there, investigative mm -hmm. techniques, you find fibers. And I've, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. some of the fibers was uh, some of her clothing or Girl Scouts or what Yes, was yes, they found um, in the, now in the initial search of the truck when he, in 95, when uh, investigators over 20 years later um, tried to find this evidence, apparently they, the evidence had been lost or they didn't know what happened to it. So all they had was the reports. So these investigators that were working on this case over 20 years later, they went back through all the witness statements and reports. They found the VIN number of Billy Jack Link's truck. They ran it and they found out that it was registered. So apparently after uh, he was arrested, it had been impounded. It had been sold at auction and whoever bought it had it registered. So that is how they found his truck about 28 years later. So these investigators um, went to the owners of the truck. And I'm sure uh, you probably know better than I do. Got a search warrant, although the owners of the truck did agree to let them take the truck to be um, searched for evidence and to analyze. They found a small sample of blood. They found a blonde hair and they found these green blue um, fibers. Now the hair, the blonde hair and the blood, they, it was tested. It came back uh, inconclusive, not enough DNA to um, get a profile or to link it to Morgan, but the fibers they said because evidently they went, they found a, because it was a green Girl Scout shirt. And I don't know if they got it from Morgan's mother, but somehow they found this, uh, a green Girl Scout t-shirt that was the same age, same generation, basically the closest thing you could get to what Morgan was wearing. They took fibers from that shirt, compared it to the fibers that were found in the truck. And they said that, um, Forensically and optically, they were very, very close. They said you basically said you couldn't get much closer um, to it being the same fiber, same kind of fiber. Okay. So you're the forensic expert, so you could probably explain what that means. Um, but that basically they were saying it uh, pretty much came from the same kind of shirt. I'm the crime scene guy. Uh, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but these lab techs, and they go in there, and like I said, they've, they've got all the equipment in the world, and mm -hmm. uh, they have the back end of the government, and so they can buy some of these microscopes and stuff that can go in there. And mm -hmm. all the way back to the Wayne Williams case, which they went in and was able through some of animal hair and some of the fibers and carpets, which was mm -hmm. huge at that time. It's one I think it was one of the first cases where they could do use carpet fibers in the mm -hmm. uh, uh, trial uh, of a suspect and mm -hmm. so um the advancements in technologies have come a long way um but the way that uh, that csi and a lot of this may have may have was during that critical time period uh, as csi was coming uh, and people across the country were getting exposed to this type of specialized training uh, mm -hmm. how you collect these hairs and fibers and um which um uh, Remarkably, they're, you know, uh, for them to find and able to test in 2021 is huge. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a long time away. And yep. uh, it's shocking, yep. amazing to me that they were able to even find them over that uh, vast time period. Yeah, and it, because it said they were actually found underneath or what they call the seat pad, mm -hmm. which I would take to be underneath the uh, seat cover. So they basically tore the truck apart. They got permission from the owners. And that's where they found the, the, I believe the blood and the hair was actually underneath, you know, on the seat pad and on some of the uh, metal parts of the truck. 
so yeah it's, it's very amazing like you said that um that they found this yeah oh. so that's what we just went over about the okay. finding the fibers and the so this i just made it on these few next few slides the big question that i've always had is because we basically know we can imagine or don't want to imagine what actually happened to morgan but we want to know who did it and where where she's at and if it's ever possible she could ever possibly be found so from what i gathered and and learned from watching this documentary is because there were seven set what they call the seven locations the five locations um i think i talked about the five um sightings of this red truck around alma the sixth location was um, at the baseball field where she was abducted from and then we have this mystery seventh location now in the documentary of course because the case is still ongoing they did not tell give a specific place of where this uh seventh location was but from what i gather it is close to um, a river or a body of water and they got this seventh location from because apparently 10 to 15 minutes after morgan was abducted there was a uh, two or three four teenagers um riding down the back roads and they claimed that they saw um, a red truck with a white camper shell parked on the, the side of the road and that they saw a man in there and it looked like he was holding a child down. Um, now, I don't know how they would have seen this. You know, I'm not saying that they're lying or, or mistaken, but, you know, possibly the red truck could have had the uh, over light interior light on and they saw. Um, so they did the investigators uh, all these years later went back to this mystery location and, um, they took cadaver dogs out there, cadaver dogs. Um, and I know I've heard you talk about how uh, unreliable cadaver dogs can be. Anyway, they, they didn't get any hits. But the interesting thing is they kept saying that it was close to a river. And the only major river that is close to this area is the Arkansas River. Now, there are some little bayous and creeks and apparently two days after Morgan disappeared there was a lot of rain that happened and the they said the flood stage for the river was 32 feet above flood stage wow so if and from what I gather from what these detectives and investigators said this mystery seventh location they are 99 percent sure that this is the last place that morgan was seen and the last place basically basically that she was so that leads me to believe they think that is where if she wasn't if her life wasn't taken there at least that is where she was left so they made the point that she could have either been buried there or more likely if she was not buried she was just left laying there and when the flood this flood waters come up most likely her body would have been washed out into the river and who knows where it could be now unfortunately yes yes all right and let's see here yeah and this is just i was just having some locations um because if you go east um, from Alma, you uh, go into the Arkansas National uh, Forest. The Arkansas River does run. You can see there uh, um, south of, high, of uh, Interstate 40. Um, so it could be, you know, that was one possible place I thought of. And I think in um, one of the slides before down in Van Buren, um, which Billy Jack Lynx is uh, from Van Buren there was uh, the arkansas river does intersect with the uh, van buren and there is um i think it's called lee park lee creek park um that was another possible location um it's very it's right on the arkansas river so i was just trying to come up with uh, i got on the google maps and uh, looked and tried to find locations and, and ironically the the uh in van buren down by lee creek park the Sonic that Billy Jack Lynx tried to or 
tried to abduct this 11 year old girl from is right next to um, this Lee Creek Park down by the river. So I was just trying to do a little detective work of my own and uh, try to find out, you know, because That's this what mystery, we all try to do. Yes, this mystery seven, and I and I understand fully why they don't give the exact location because the this case is still open. But man, if we just knew where this mystery location was and just to uh, get an idea, you know, okay. of where, but like I said, if it, you know, the floodwaters were that high, yeah. um, if, and she got washed into the river when the water receded, mm -hmm. she could be anywhere, you know. I mean, absolutely so beautiful sad. child. It's absolutely yes. a beautiful child. Yes. And just a, yes. such a tragedy. All right. Yes. Uh, before we get to the questions, if anyone has a question out there, put it in chat. I'll be going through chat, trying to catch back up with all um, <laughs> interesting. Uh, if there's any good questions or any, just questions, we appreciate them. But uh, before we do that, I want to thank uh, the other night at the end of a show, right after we ended, um, uh, one of our gals, I don't know which gal it was, uh, gifted a membership. And here's your blue light for that. I appreciate it. It came online and uh, we didn't know it at the time. But I think it was Gail Hurd. I'm not sure, though. Yeah. I watched, well, we I have, uh, actually, uh, we have this Gail tonight who also has gifted five True Crime Web memberships. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. And then we have uh, Brenda. Uh, gift. And then we have Gail Hurd who gifted a True Crime Web membership. And so um, I'm well blessed with uh, the Gails. And I thank everybody yeah. for uh, supporting our channel and the views yes. and, um, and sadly, Mrs. Steve isn't, uh, she's <laughs> up there working. Um, and uh, like I said, doing some painting. And uh, so y'all just had to bear with me as I try to get through this chat and trying to figure out and look at the questions. But hey, uh, we're doing good so far. I don't think either one of us has broken uh, the, go the Google machine yet. So we're not doing yet, good. but there's always <laughs> hope. Not yet. <laughs> Uh, All right, let me go down through here. And like I said, if you have any questions about this case or if you know anything about this case, make sure law enforcement, um, yes. if you lived in the area, if you knew someone owned a vehicle like that, because that's a very yes. different vehicle, owning a, yes. uh, 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 that type of truck with a short um, uh, camper shell on it. Yes, it's very distinct. That's one of the things. Um, the camper, the camper shell was a little bit shorter than the um, bed of the truck, so they said there was about a six-inch um, difference uh, or gap between uh, the end of the cab and the beginning of the uh, camper shell. There was also um, damage, I believe, to the back. Either uh, I can't remember if it was a, I think it was the back rear. Um, side there was damage so uh and the um there were there were curtains in the window also so it was a very uh very distinct um truck yeah and uh camper shells i mean i know why you would have uh, curtains uh, uh, for privacy and stuff mm -hmm. but uh, even mm -hmm. with these predators it's sad yep yep yeah, let's see trying to get called up here I uh, appreciate all the kind comments everyone has about Southern Gals um, uh, channel because they are correct. That, Thank uh, you so much. Some great content. And I appreciate that for, from uh, my uh, uh, community. And we have some creators in the house, and I appreciate y'all being here tonight. And like I said, um, when I reached out to a, a, a lot of creators earlier regarding um, the um, a, a, a chair I was needing, uh, uh, the response was huge, and I want to thank all of y'all out there uh, that uh, reached out to me. Let's see here. All right. I, I'm not as good at this as uh, Mrs. Steve is. <laughs> you do better than I do. Of course, when I do my lives, I don't have uh, near as many comments, so it's easy for me to keep up with mine. Oh, no. Uh, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. oh, it will. That will change. You keep doing Perfect. what you're doing and uh, keep bringing awareness to these cases, and that will change. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who uh, who uh, comes uh, to watches my videos and comes to uh, my lives whenever I have time to do them. It uh, gives me my thumbs up and my, and my comments. Um, 
everything is very much appreciated. Absolutely. It's, uh, um, like I said, I've always res have the utmost respect for the fact that the commitment that, uh, you know, and this pure commitment and uh, passion for what you believe in to do this, but for the fact as a small growing channel, those early days and everything, it's all you. There's, you know, you, you think that you're up against the world, but you're doing such a great service. And uh, I appreciate that and respect that so much. Oh, thank you. Well, I, like I said, I appreciate you. You uh, I have were probably my biggest inspiration in um, learning how to uh, how to be a creator and learning how to do it right. And um, so I just uh, appreciate you so much. If somebody would snip that there so that I can play that back for Mrs. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> You don't think Mr. Uh, Mrs. Steve would believe that? Oh, yeah, she will. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that way I can just bring it back at, uh, at, at, at touch. At opportune button. times. Yeah, look here. <laughs> yeah, and you um, can tell Mrs. Um, this is a, a, a question. Could the other kids describe the man or the car he had? Did the other kids, didn't they say they saw her talking to him? Did they? <laughs> But do we know what that description was? Yes, the description. Um, well, first, I just said a creepy man, which is pretty generic. Um, but they did do um, identikits, whatever those are. I've heard of them. You probably I'm sure you know what they are. But they described him as um, being around six foot tall, 180 pounds with a solid be a solid build. He had a salt and pepper hair. Um, Bearded mustache, look like a kind of scruffy three to four days growth. And I believe the kids said that um, that he was in a red truck. Now, they didn't mention, uh, mention anything about a camper shell. And uh, he was smoking a cigarette and he was wearing um, blue or a cut off blue jean shorts, um, no shirt. They said he had a, a hairy chest and that according to the kids that he was anywhere from 23 to 38 years old. Wow. So, yeah. That's a, a, an odd. Uh, I mean, it, you, generally when, um, uh, if you gave me that description in um, um, Georgia, uh, as I was working a case, you know, that type of dress up, you know, you're thinking about that someone's under the influence of some type of drugs or otherwise, because mm -hmm. that's not an yep. outfit that you normally would see uh, yeah. someone approaching yeah. children by and, and the adults mm -hmm. especially would have paid us a lot yeah. of notice to that. Exactly. And it is unknown. Now I've read in some articles that there were some adult, wit there was at least one or two adult witnesses that also gave a description. And then I've read in other articles that the, the children were the only ones that actually saw it. So, you know, who knows? Um, but the kids, both of the kids were pretty uh, consistent in their descriptions. Yeah, uh, there was a, a evidently where they were playing and there was a lot of sand and stuff. And all the kids had to empty their shoes of the sand and stuff, I believe. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, because from what I understand, um, this parking lot actually was kind of a multi-use. Um, when they had ball game or baseball games, they used it for baseball games. There was a office building that used it, and also the uh, Department of City Works used it, and that's where the sand came from. The they piled sand up for use um, for whatever they used the sand for. Um, So, yeah, they were playing in the sand and uh, she had stopped uh, to empty the sand out of her shoes. And uh, unfortunately, the other kids went ahead of her and she disappeared. Yeah. Um, and you said that this uh, truck had been seen, uh, what, seven times or something? It had been seen um, five times in the week because Morgan disappeared on a Friday. It had been, been seen five times um, in that week. Um. The first one, I believe, was a teenage girl um, was walking down the side of the road. Um, this person in the in the red truck approached her. Of course, luckily, she uh, she just went on. He drove off. 
The uh, second one was, I believe, uh, two male children were on a bus bi- were on bicycles. Um, he approached them. They rode off. So he took off. Um, the third one, I believe, was a once again, two younger children were playing in the front yard of a house. The mother was around the side of the house, maybe doing yard work. All of a sudden, the, the two kids came around the house screaming, Mama, Mama, somebody's trying to talk to us. By the time she ran around, she just saw the red truck drive away. And I think the other two were just, um, once again, kids on bicycles. And he basically yelled at them to get out of the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lone Pony, thank you for your support, uh, says uh, did, uh, Don. Did they ever search his house? Sorry if I missed that info. Um. I believe they did, and I don't think they found anything uh, of a uh, evidentiary value, unfortunately. Cynthia, thank you for your ten dollars super sticker. Appreciate that. Thank you. And, okay, and let me scroll on down through here and try to get called up on some more of the stuff. But uh, the uh, now uh, is there a, a during that time period, do we have any other unsolved cases of missing children that you know or are aware of? Not that I could find. Um, the only other cases from around that area, they weren't children, uh, but you had the Melissa Witt case. She went missing on uh, December 1st of 94. Her, uh, unfortunately, her she was kidnapped from a, a a bowling alley parking lot in Fort Smith. Um, 13 weeks later on January uh, 13th or 15th of 95, her body was found in the Ozark National Forest. Um, You had the Rebecca Gould case. That case was solved. Um, But as far as I have in my research, I could not find any other missing children. All we have were these um, two... um, attempted abductions on the night, the morning before Morgan went missing. And then the next day, and then these sightings, these five sightings of the uh, red truck mm-hmm. is uh, all that uh, I could find or that were mentioned publicly. Olivia too says, why are these searches called off? Uh, we, and that is a great question. And mm-hmm. um, uh, sometimes, like I said, when the tips come in or, or uh, as you obtain a search warrant, that you're looking for a specific item at a specific location. And uh, whenever you obtain a search warrant, it's just not a, you know, uh, you have to go by what information you have and you're looking at us, you know, and uh, of course, uh, not always due to time and um, uh, from the instant date to the time that you get there, Mother Nature can play a, a, a big role in the uh, destruction of evidence and stuff that mm-hmm. what someone may come up years later and say, this is what I saw and it's there um, that, uh, you know, things do degrade and evidence does get destroyed, sadly. Mm-hmm. And um, so sometimes, yeah. you know, you you go out there and you dig up. And I think we saw that on the Michael on Monkey Vaughn uh, case out in um, um out west uh, on his case where uh, they dug up a backyard and they think they uh, found where he was at one point but mm-hmm. uh, they believe he's been moved yeah yeah but um yeah but what drives me crazy like i said earlier about this case is this mystery seventh location but uh like i said i i can understand why they don't release it because uh which department was that do you remember Oh, uh, I believe it was actually, it was a combination of the uh, Alma Police Department. Um, the, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of what county Alma's in, uh, Crawford County Sheriff's Department and the FBI, I believe. They were, they all had a hand in uh, searching um, these properties. The age of the other children, uh, I don't know if this is what they're talking about. How old was the male friend? Uh, are they talking The ones about- that were at the um, game with them. I think they were only, so Morgan was six, and I think um, the the two kids that she went out to the um, parking lot with were maybe a couple, two to three years older than she was. So they would have been probably um, 
seven or eight years old, possibly nine. Um, I think in the documentary it mentions that they were just a, a couple of years older than Morgan, or Colleen mentioned it in a, one of her interviews. Okay, Molly's told me that it was Gail Hurd the other from the uh, on the previous show. Thank you, appreciate you for that membership. Thank you, Gail. All right. <laughs> um, do we know if the uh, 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 if our uh, family is uh, still uh, alive? Do we know? Yes, um, Colleen is still alive. Of course, she went on to. Um, form the uh, Morgan Dick Foundation. Um, they do a lot of good work. Um, not only do they um, help with the missing children cases, they also help with the uh, missing adult cases. Um, her younger um, brother and sister are still alive. Her father is still alive. Um, now, Morgan's parents had divorced in uh, 94, one year before Morgan went missing. Um, from everything I've read, the uh, when they were divorced, it was amicable. There was no problems uh, with that. And because the dad did come, uh, um, un unfortunately, uh, not by police, but by the media and uh, individuals, the public, he did come up under some scrutiny. But um, Yeah, your uh, microphone has changed. I don't know what happened. Uh, on your, yeah, you've got a little bit of uh, some type of background. Uh, uh, metallic, tinny. It, 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 it may try try it now a little bit closer and see what it does. Okay, is that bad? Any better? Yeah, it still it has a be. little uh, strange sound there. Um, it could be my. I'm like I said, I'm doing this through my phone, and uh, I have a Verizon, and it's not okay. always. Yeah, auto tune. Auto tune has kicked in and uh, has made you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's see, taken I broke, away. I broke the Google machine. It has taken away your southern accent. Oh, my goodness. That might be a good thing. I don't know. Oh, a lot no. of people say they can't no, understand a lot of people, uh, 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 A lot of people uh, uh, appreciate that uh, accent. I've seen it in the chat here. <laughs> oh, well, thank, thank you very much. But apparently, um, these automated, uh, like if you uh, call a Walmart pharmacy, now they have this stupid uh, voice-activated thing. And apparently, um, the Walmart pharmacy automated voice does not understand Southern. I or maybe it's just me. Because whenever I try to call in a med or whatever I'm doing, please repeat that. I didn't understand what you said. It just drives me nuts. Yeah, the creepy man. You know, even in, uh, uh, I think it was the Delphi case, uh, yes. there's uh, the rumor about uh, the creepy mm -hmm. man. Yep. Okay, yep. now your voice is back. Whatever you is just it? Oh, good. fixed it. Whatever. Whatever button you hit. Okay, I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay in this position. Uh, yeah, Alex, like I, I think it's my Now it went back to the other. I, I don't know what's happening there. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Like I said, it's well, probably it's my no cell problem. <laughs> It could be. It could just be. Uh, yeah. Now it's I know. Perfect. Oh, okay. Here we go. And uh, Mother of Dragons, 499. Good to see you, Mr. C. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for your support. Because it allows us to go out and do things that, uh, you know, without you that we would not be able to do. Yes. Mr. Steve and his team do uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful work. I do. All volunteer. Uh, Unearthed Secrets is in the uh, house here with us. And, uh, I, Hi, I, Carolyn, my friend. Yeah. It's good to see yeah. you. Yeah, we have some meetings and other things to take care of this week also about some uh, equipment and uh, talking to some uh, other professionals. <laughs> Somebody says, uh, uh, stop talking in that fake Tennessee accent. Uh, <laughs> Tennessee accent, yeah, they, uh, evidently. <laughs> I, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to uh, <laughs> fool everybody that I'm not in Georgia, I'm in uh, uh Tennessee. No, you, you definitely have a Georgia accent. I've heard some Tennessee accents. And it is Tennessee, even within the southern region, even within a, a state, whether it be Georgia or Arkansas, depending on what part of the state you live in, there are definitely different uh, accents. Oh, man. But uh, anyway, 
uh, is there anything else that you would, um, uh, that uh, you think where the case is going or, um, and um, uh, of what you think might possibly be done on the case in the future? Well, I'm hoping that, um, of course, like I said, it's still an open case. Um, and I'm hoping because they're, they're still working the uh, Billy Jack Link's angle um, as he is, uh, because when they found these fibers in the truck, um, one of the FBI agents um, said that they were going to uh, start focusing uh, basically solely on uh, the Billy Jack Links, and they're asking for any information that anybody might have um, about Billy Jack Links. He is known um, to have connections to oh, a bunch of states, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Kentucky. Um, so they're just asking for any information that anybody anywhere in any of these states uh, may have. And you can call, um, I'm sure you can call the Alma Police Department or the uh, FBI. Um, I forgot, to, I was going to include a slide with all the phone numbers on it, but of course I forgot to. Be I just, uh, yeah, they're just looking for any, any information. Their main, main focus now is uh, Billy J. Link, so they want any and uh, all information that they can find uh, on the uh, Mr. Billy Jack links. So okay. hopefully they can find some uh, more connection to uh, to him and to Morgan and uh, can definitively, if he is the offender, uh, definitive, definitively say that um, he is the one. Like I said, uh -huh. to me, that's the biggest thing is, is finding who did it and if at all possible, uh, where she could be. Um, but it looks like if they're correct in their what they're thinking about um, the water and the river, unfortunately, we may uh, never know. That's, I know it that's what breaks my heart is that we may never know, may, never be able to uh, find her and bring her home. But um, I, Cynthia Gaines uh, gifted five True Crime Web memberships. Thank you, Cynthia. It Thank you, a lot Cynthia. To me. And uh, let's see what else is going on here. Let's see. But uh, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. And I uh, uh, appreciate everything you, uh, um, the, uh, that you have done for this uh, uh, case and the awareness you have brought. Because well, it means so a much. lot to uh, uh, us as a community. And, uh, yes. and I look forward to working with you in the future and everything. And uh Appreciate you being here tonight. You got any thank closing you. words? Uh, just thank you for having me on. It was a big honor. Um, and I do hope we can work together because I do have a couple other cases that are uh, that are close to my heart. So uh, just whenever uh, we get a chance to um, can do this again, um, I would like to uh, present them. Um, but just thank you. Uh, it was an honor for me to be on here. Like I said, you're one of my, my biggest inspiration, my biggest uh, hero uh, for doing what I do. And I uh, thank everybody in chat um, and everybody who supports me. And uh, it was a blast to be here. I, right. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, I absolutely appreciate you being here. It's been an honor. And I look forward now in just a few minutes, I'm going to another channel. I'm going to go over to Christian behind the crime door. And yes, I'm going to be following uh, you all over there. All right. And I appreciate it. And if anyone uh, in uh, chat wishes to follow me over there, absolutely uh, come on over and i look forward to seeing y'all there and uh let's go support another great channel and um but y'all guys stay safe out there and we'll see y'all soon bye-bye thanks bye -bye. everybody thank you